Greetings to you all. In this video I will take apart this Denon DBP 2012 UB Blu-ray player. Some of the new subscribers might be slightly confused, but teardowns is how I started this channel. I will keep producing them alongside with the videos about big screen cinemas. Just before I start, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to Bortec channel. It is very important as your subscriptions are helping me to get my hands on home cinema equipment such as this Blu-ray player. If you would like to support Bortec channel financially, you could use the super thanks feature here on YouTube or consider becoming a Patreon on Patreon. You will find all the links in the description down below. Denon DBP 2012 UB was released back in 2011 and its original price was £750. It has one HDMI output, active cooling and what stands out the most is that it has analog 7.1 output. I will include full specs of this unit in the description of this video. Great, let's have a look at what's inside of this Denon Blu-ray player. First of all, I have to detach the loader panel. If I don't do it now, I won't be able to remove the whole front panel later. I can unplug this unit from the mains and remove the top cover. It is fixed with 9 screws and feels quite heavy. Inside you can see power PCB, main AC and audio PCB. Next, I will remove the front panel. Before I proceed, I have to disconnect the USB extension cable and ribbon cable which links front and main PCBs. As always, I will protect the ribbon cable with PVC tape to eliminate any potential damage from static electricity. The whole front panel is held in place with plastic clips which I have to release one by one in order to remove it. Here we are, the front panel is now removed. This panel is made purely from plastic, which is rather disappointing. Now I have to remove 14 screws, which the front PCB is fixed with. Here we are. On the front PCB you can see 11 micro switches, USB socket, IR receiver, and vacuum fluorescent display. PT6302, the driver chip that controls the vacuum display, is hiding right behind it. Even though the front panel is made of plastic, this unit is fully shielded by a chassis and top cover, which are both made of steel. My next step would be to remove the IR PCB. As always, the ribbon cable has to be disconnected first, Four screws go next and PCB is successfully extracted. Not much is going on on this board. You can see two 3.5mm jack for room-to-room -room remote control as well as RS-232 connector. There is an integrated circuit on the other side of the board, which is an RS-232 transceiver made by Renesas. The fan which cools the unit down while it operates is removed. It runs on really low RPM, so don't worry, you won't be able to hear it. As all extra parts are removed, it's time to extract the rear panel itself. It is fixed with one screw at the bottom and eight screws at the rear. Two clips are released and the panel is now detached. I think now I cleared some room and it is time to remove the power PCB. I will disconnect the main power feed first and then another ribbon cable which links power and main PCBs. Six screws are undone and the power PCB is now extracted. This board supplies current for all electronic components of this player, including motors, laser, integrated circuits and other audio components. 
Besides that, a part of this board provides 5 volt standby current. This current is necessary so the unit could react to the commands received from IR or wired remote as well as RS232 connector. Now it is time to remove the audio PCB. Cable which feeds the audio PCB is disconnected first and next goes the shielded ribbon data cable. Five screws are undone and audio PCB is now extracted. Before I start looking at electronic components of this PCB, could someone explain to me why there is a copper foil around the RCA connectors? From what I found on Wikipedia, copper is transparent to electromagnetic waves with frequency up to 1 GHz. This makes it completely useless against the noise in audio signal. Even though there is a lot of components on this PCB, most of them perform the same function. You can see 5 Burr Brown PCM1795 32-bit 192 kHz stereo digital to analog converters. Each of these DACs converts two channels of digital audio into analog. These channels are surround back left and right, surround left and surround right, center and subwoofer, front left and front right. The last DAC is for the two-channel stereo output. After an analog audio signal comes out of DAC, it is amplified by this JRC4565M dual low noise operational amplifiers. It is interesting that the audio signal that comes out of DAC is symmetrical and it remains symmetrical after it's amplified by the first stage DACs. Only the second stage of 4565M operational amplifiers makes it unbalanced. Great, finally I can remove the main IC. I thought that after undoing 4 screws I'll be able to extract it, but it looks like it's still attached somewhere. It appears that the sticky foam on the front of the unit is still holding these two parts together. After I had carefully removed the foam, I was finally able to extract the main IC. Just before I come back to the main IC, I will remove the four feet which are still attached to the chassis. Great! I guess now I will be able to extract the main PCB. I just have to make sure that nothing will obstruct the extraction of this PCB. This cable here powers up the tray motor. This ribbon cable powers up and controls spindle and sled motors. Four screws are undone and now I have to carefully lift the board and disconnect a very short ribbon cable which links main and pickup PCBs. Great success! I think now I will try to remove the heatsink which is fixed with three screws to the main PCB. Now I have to carefully lift it in order not to damage the chips. It was surprising to see that the heatsink is held only by the force of these two springs. Let's have a look at the main PCB. You can see analog component and composite video outputs, coaxial audio output, HDMI output and Ethernet connector. This is the MT8530 MPEG decoder. This decoder can be found in players made by other brands such as Philips, Pioneer and Marantz. You can see four 1GB SD RAM chips made by Nanya Technology located around the main unit. This Samsung chip located nearby is an 8-bit NAND flash memory. This is where the operating system of this unit is stored. Another integrated circuit which requires cooling is a single-chip HDMI 1.3 video processor. Some of its functions are video scaling, picture controls, on-screen display and test pattern generator. 
Altera Max 2 is a complex programmable logic device or just a CPLD. This chip is reprogrammable and can perform a multitude of logic functions. I have seen lots of these being used in Moran's products. This silicon image chip is a Vastline HDMI 1.3 transmitter with deep color, high bit rate HD audio support. On the flip side of the board you can see a chip made by analog devices, which is a multi-format high-speed digital to analog video encoder. The majority of modern Blu-ray players don't have analog outputs anymore, so you won't find video DACs there. Alright, next I will remove the optical drive cover. By the way, you can check out one of my earlier videos where I tore down a Moran's UD707 Blu-ray player. These two players are from a similar price range and period. In my opinion, Moran's design and build quality is a bit better than this Denon. Ok, back to DVP 2012UB. I guess now I can lose the bracket which supports the optical drive. I have to lift it carefully as there is a cable threaded through it. In order to remove the tray I have to manually turn this gear wheel until the tray reaches the limiting clips. After the clips are released on both sides the tray can be removed. Next goes the clamper IC. Last four screws are removed and the drive unit is extracted. Great, let's have a look at what we have here. This is a spindle motor that spins the CD. Here you can see the sled motor which moves the laser pickup relatively to the disc. This is the laser pickup itself. According to a service manual, the whole optical assay is supplied as a single part. That makes me think that the whole optical drive is supplied by a third-party manufacturer. One more interesting thing about this part. These are stationary magnets, accompanied by electromagnets fixed to the moving part of this pickup. This is needed because optical discs are not always perfectly flat and they can wobble when they spin. This solution allows the laser beam to be constantly focused. Here we are. Now Denon DBP 2012 UD is fully dissembled. You can observe all the electronics components of this Blu-ray player. Before I put everything back together, have a look at what's going on inside when this player operates. I managed to assemble the unit but left the optical drive without the cover, so you could see how the disc is loaded, starting up and playing inside this Denon DBP 2012 UD. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe to Bortec channel. This is it for this episode, stay tuned and I'll see you soon, goodbye.